This part of the river is a secluded oasis, popular with families as a swimming hole. But on this day, Treadwell has the river to himself for his training program. He wants to build up his horse's muscle strength without straining its legs. Glenburn's arm, a six-year-old gelding weighing a thousand pounds, has won seven times over a three-year career. With the help of his stable hand, Alice Holden, Treadwell ties a half-inch rope to the horse's halter. With it, he can control the horse from the bridge. As far as Treadwell can see from 20 feet up on the bridge, everything appears to be going to plan. The horse was swimming, I had control of the horse. But suddenly, something startles it. The horse looks like it's going to drown. Then all of a sudden, I saw something hanging off the back of him. As the horse rolled over, the colour lightened and it went to a, a white underneath, whatever it was. Whatever this creature is, it has the force to hold on to and the power to submerge a 1,000-pound horse. The horse is in trouble. We had a problem. I've got to get this horse out of there. Whatever's wrong, if I can get him out of the water, I can control it. He won't drown. The only reason it hadn't been killed is because of the tether around its neck. If we hadn't have got him out, I don't believe he would have survived. Trainer Alan Treadwell was able to pull his horse to safety. If the victim had been a human, a fifth of the size of this horse, there would be no hope of surviving the attack. The horse, Glen Burns' arm, was treated by a veterinary surgeon who photographed the wound. I want to meet up with Alan Treadwell to find out if this attack can be attributed to a bull shark. Hello, Alan. Good day. How are you? All right, thanks. This is the boy, is he? Yeah, this is him. This is... Can I say hello? Yeah, say hello. Hey. So he's, just, he's not just an ordinary horse, is he? He's a, no, he's a bit of an athlete. He's a bit of an athlete, yeah, he has been. Or used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Can we see the wound at all? Can you show me where it, where it was? Yeah, I can do. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it healed pretty well. Yeah. That's where it was on the flat there. Right. So looking at him now, I mean, you, yeah, he looks you, fine. He looks fine. But I mean, did he recover fully or? No, I don't think so. Actually, he swells up in the fetlock after a hard run. Right. Which virtually makes it impossible to race him. So in effect, yeah, this actually finished his career. It has done. Yes. Yeah. It still seems to be a bit awkward in that one back leg. I don't know what happened to it. Mm. It's impossible to say. So it, it, you know, possibly there's some sort of you know. Deep muscle damage, some... Yeah, it could uh, be. Something. That's exactly yeah. right, yeah. Although there had been no reports of sharks this high up the Brisbane River before, Alan Treadwell believes that what he saw was a shark. Yet he only glimpsed the white shape for a fraction of a second. I want to take a logical approach to discover exactly what happened here. My first strategy is to measure the salt content of this stretch of the Brisbane River. The water's saltiness lessens the further upriver you go. I've taken a reading of seawater with this machine and the reading I get is about 17. Down the other end of the scale, anything less than about one is fresh water. So the fact that I've just got a reading of less than 0.5, this is fresh water. I know bull sharks can get into fresh water. Everything points to this being a shark attack. Except for one thing. There's a good reason why I don't think they could be responsible for this particular incident. Look at this. Just five miles down the river is this man-made barrier, and it just goes right across the river. Mount Crosby Weir is a dam that has been in place for over 100 years. The difference in height between the water on the ocean side and the upriver side is 12 feet. Now I can understand how something might possibly get up from the sea to here, but how's it going to get over that? So 
what else could it be? I think there might be a clue in something Alan Treadwell told me. Although on the surface, the wound to Glen Burns' arm has healed, underneath the skin, there is such profound muscle damage that he can no longer race. That is exactly the case with attacks made by another animal entirely, the saltwater crocodile. When a crocodile bites its victim, it deposits bacteria in the wound that cause long-term muscle damage. The most distinctive thing about a saltwater croc is that big, gnarly head with those big, actually blunt, but long, penetrating teeth. Saltwater crocodiles will live in freshwater, saltwater, brackish water, mineral water. They don't care. <laughs> Once a crocodile reaches 13, 14 feet and up, you're dealing with an animal that can take down a one-tonne water buffalo. It seems more likely that the creature which attacked Glen Burns' arm is not a shark, but a crocodile. What they prefer is deep, dark, murky water because they are the masters of camouflage. That's how they get their prey. They will launch from an invisible position up out of the water, grab whatever it is they're targeting, drag it back into the water in the blink of an eye. Just the kind of water where the attack happened. There's one problem with this idea. While crocs were once found this far south, none have been seen any closer than 150 miles away in the last 20 years. I would be surprised that a crocodile who is big enough to take on a horse, A, would go unnoticed for long periods of time, you know, way outside its range, um, and, and B, in that situation, would miss. <laughs> you know, if it's in deep water, it's a large animal and it's gone in to really have a go, um, you'd be the luckiest horse alive. When all avenues seem closed, I turn to the least unlikely option in my pursuit of the truth. If the attacker wasn't a crocodile, it has to be a shark. Yet I need to be certain. If this is the truth, it has far-reaching repercussions. It would show conclusively that savage bull sharks can and will launch attacks in fresh water. It would mean there is no kind of water that's safe from these predators.